Shalom, brothers and sisters. All honor and praise and esteem goes to our Heavenly Father Yahweh in the name of Yahusha Hamashiach. Brothers, brothers and sisters, I got a message for you. But first, I would like to say, um, study the name of Yahusha and what it is connected to versus the name JC and what it is connected to and what it is founded on and built up as. And you will see that calling upon that name is calling upon the name of the Roman Savior in the way that it has come to present its religion to you and turn you away from the Most High. And you will also see the exact opposite with Yahusha, where Yahusha leads you into all righteousness and leads you into the ways of the Most High, Yahuwah. So do this study on your own and you make up your own mind whether you're going to keep calling upon the Romans mighty one that they're looking for to come and save them. Or are you going to call upon Yahusha? Because the name JC is not even translated right from the original name, Yahusha. So I just wanted to mention that, brothers and sisters, because many still believe in it doesn't matter whether you call upon the name JC or Yahusha. And even other names such as Yahawah Shai. If you do the root words, names has meanings, brother, sister. And let's face it, when the, if the Most High names you, it has a meaning to it. And it would describe you, pretty much, if you walk in his ways. Like my name, Jedaniah. And you can replace the J with the Y and say Jedaniah. And it will need, it will still mean peace, peaceful, beloved of Yahweh. But if you place the Y with that JC character, you come out with Jesus. And, and doesn't Kanye West call himself Jesus? No connection with Yahusha. But it's just a name meaning. When you look at the name meaning. And we know that Yahusha means Yahweh is our Savior. Right? So, y'all do the homework, do the research, and get an understanding. Even like, like the name Yashai, that means my Savior. You know what I mean? It's, you could call, you could say Yashai. Or Yeshaya. You have to look at the name meanings. And what it's connected to. But. Uh, the real name is. Um, Yahusha. Brothers and sisters. And I'm just mentioning that. So that you can. You can do your own homework. Your own research. On these particular subjects. That. You won't be tripped up. In the future. When it comes down to it and you need to call upon the name that you won't be sitting there calling upon a, another so-called mighty one. That's just like people still saying this word and this word here, the G-O-D and the L-R-D. You're bringing in another entity. Some people still thinking that... Uh, the mighty one of Islam is the same mighty one of Yahshua. And that you could call that A-L-L-A-H word the most high. They don't think it's a problem or a difference. And there is. So with that said, let's get back. Let's get to the, uh, the topic of this particular message. Now, this is concerning us being in the land of a captivity. 
But I wanted to go over this part when we come out of our captivity first. Uh, where the Most High is saying that he's going to uh, build the waste cities and plant vineyards and and we, you know, we're going to plant vineyards and we're going to uh, eat of them. We're going to uh, and drink of the wine and and any and whatever fruits of the garden, we're going to eat from them. But he also said, he also told us to do something in the land of our captivity while we're there. And we're going to cover that. So right here it says, Behold, the day is come, save Yahweh, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that sows seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people, of Yahshua. That means he will bring us out of captivity. And they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat of the fruit of them and I will plant them upon their land and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them save Yahweh thy allure okay now let's get over here to Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 5 well let's start reading with 4 this is what Yahweh Almighty the allure of Yahshua says to all those I carried to exile from Babylon to, I mean, from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and settle down. This is why you were captivity. Now, when we was in that harsh state of captivity, the only thing we can build was shacks. And there was a certain amount of food that they would allow us to grow. To stay alive. But it says here, build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Plant your own gardens. Now this is going based on the word of the Most High. Not somebody sitting on here prepping and trying to tell you this is how you're going to survive the end times. That's a whole different way of thinking and, and a way, a different way of coming at doing this part, planting your own garden. But just plainly obeying the commandment from the Most High with telling you to build your own house and settle down and plant gardens and eat the produce. There's nothing wrong with that, brother and sister. If you can afford to buy your house, buy it. Buy the land and make sure you own it. Settle into that home. Make it yours. Plant the gardens and eat the food of it. There's a reason why he said that. And we know the reason why. Look at our health. Look at what we're going through. Eating their foods. Y'all see what I'm saying? The Most High thought this out thoroughly when he, when he put all these words in his book. That they would stand the test of time. He also says marry and have sons and daughters. That means get a family. Have children. Find wives for your sons. You as the parent. You as the head of the household man. You to find wives for your sons. You see how they doing right now on their own. They, they, they finding all type of monsters to marry. And they, they end up going through treacherous times and, and end up in divorce and everything taken from them. They have nothing to leave their children. Brothers and sisters. Some reason for he told us to do these things. And give your daughters in marriage. That means when you as the husband, as the man, consulting with your wife as one unit, as one being, y'all love your children and you know what's best for them because you're going to know your child and you will pick out. You will see that this man or that man ain't good for your daughter or they're good for your daughter. 
and then you would give your daughter away to build help that man build continue the legacy of his people of his family to continue on the name of his family daughters of zion so that they too may have sons and daughters increase in number there do not decrease and we know what we're doing as we are, are fornicating our butts off and walking into those Planned Parenthood places and going to those abortion clinics and and having all these abortions. Decreasing our numbers. It's not just the curses that's upon us, but it's, it's disobedience to these commandments and not even knowing they exist. Not knowing these commandments. It's tearing down families and households, tearing down people's health, health, and dissociating families from families just by both obeying the commandments that would bring that back. Verse seven it says, "Also seek the peace, seek the peace." and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. But right now, you seeking disturbance and riot in all manner of, of uh, violence against your enemy. The Most High put you here. Do you understand that? I carried I carried. You see that word? Who can escape the most I had? He carried you into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. We know that the Western world is a mixture of Babylon and, and Egypt, the house of bondage. Mystery Babylon, the great. When you look at the complete Western powers that ruled the whole world this was not just for the first Babylon that we went into this applies to the Babylon you're in right now and it also says pray to the to Yahweh Yahuwah for it because if it prospers you too will prosper I'm not saying sell your soul to the city in lasciviousness and unrighteousness and in all manner of concupiscence and evil and, and participating in filthiness and foulness. The Most High says, seek the peace and prosperity of the city which you are in, in the land of your captivity. And pray to uh, Yahuwah for it. Pray for that city that you're in. Because if it prospers, you too will. You, you, you too will prosper. Can you imagine all the Hebrews in one city praying unto the Most High? Walk, coming back to their ways of the Most High. Walking in these commandments and praying to Him and being answered. All of a sudden, the city engineers actually... Stop poisoning you through the um, water supply. All of a sudden, laws come in place to make sure that you are able to buy a home and to make sure that you're able to grow food there at your own home. Laws change to the way you can harvest water, rainwater, and filter it out yourself for emergency purposes. Can you imagine that? Almighty One looking down and seeing the good of His people coming back to His law, such as commandments underneath the new covenant through our mediator, Yahusha, and looking at that city that and seeing in your heart that you're seeking the peace and prosperity of that city, 
in the land of your captivity and you praying for it to, to the most high so that it will prosper and you what you think is going to happen when you go back to the land into your land you're because you're going to prosper they will prosper too this is the mindset of a kingdom child I'm talking about I'm not talking about the worldly worldly Jacobites but the kingdom to come Yahshua lights think like this and they pray for their enemies and they pray for the cities that they're in that they may prosper in it that they may have favor with the employers as an employee that they may have favor when they walk in a bank and need a bank loan to open up a business. That they may have favor to have customers. Because your business is seeking the peace and prosperity of the city and the people in it. And they see it. And the Most High is giving you favor. And they will send those people into your shops, into your restaurant, into your place of business. You lose a job and by the end of the week, you got another one. Why? Because you're walking around in peace and prosperity, not just for yourself and your family, but you're seeking the peace of the families in that city. Regardless of who hates you in the city, who who wants to kill you or, or hang you or uh, cut your throat or string you up on a tree or drag you on the tail end of a truck with a chain. You are underneath the commandments of the Most High and you will prosper because His word will not come back void. And that's where your faith kick in. And you got to say, you know what? I'm kicking my thoughts to the curve. I'm kicking it to the curve because I believe this. I believe in what this says. And you stick with it. If trials and tribulations come along, you go through it. When you come out, things will be set back or right. Look what happened with Job. He had it going on. And then the Most High let the evil come in and, and, and twist this whole world up. But the Most High rebuilt him back better because of his faith and belief in the Most High. So the Most High comes first. Now, after hearing what you hear, and if you go to, uh, I think it's in uh, 1 Corinthians, where it talks about uh, obey your masters, you'll get an understanding why it said that. Because the Father, the one carried you here to be mastered over, because you didn't want him to be your master. So he said masters over you. And, he's and he told you what to do while you were there. Look at this right here. It says, do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them. So you see a lot of people rising up, wanting to come together, over overthrow the government overthrow their city, overthrow the uh, the cops. And I'm not saying that they're, they're not doing evil. The wicked, let the wicked be wicked still. The Most High is able to overpower them and still give you favor, regardless of if you're amongst racists. I've been amongst, I've worked amongst racists. So have you. But he is able to give favor and protect you. They'll, they'll, they won't do you no harm. But there are some out there that's not under the protection of the Most High, not under the Most High at all. And they're the ones that's getting harmed out there. And it's not for his namesake. 
be getting beat, shot, killed, hung, stabbed, brutalized, and they 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 don't even know the Most High. They die not even knowing knowing Him. You see, we who are the children of Most High that die for the Most High, we're gonna die being challenged. We're gonna die being challenged and uh, confronted about our faith. That's where the persecution and hangings come in at. When you change and you got the spirit of Most High upon you, you are being converted. And because of that, everybody around you will look at you differently. They will. You're different now. Your presence is different. And when you get into doing all these things right here, and start obeying the law, such the commandments of the Most High, practicing the Sabbath days, practicing the feast days, they have no understanding of what you're doing. They think that you're you're going to go into the lake of fire because you're doing all those things. They don't even see that they're the ones that's going to end up in that same place they thinking you're going to go to if they don't convert and change and find the truth, brothers and sisters. But back to this topic here. I kind of slid off a little bit. When you're in the land of your captivity, if you get you a house, you should plant your own gardens and eat them because that's one of the commandments of the Most High. Not because somebody said you need to survive the end times, prep for these end times. No, you, you want to feed your family good foods. That's why you're planting the garden and you're obeying these commandments right here. You want your family to drink good water. If you're outside the city limits, you dig your well, water well. Get that fresh, good, clean water down from the bottom that's waiting on you from the most high. You want to harvest and filter rainwater as well, depending on the, the area you're in. You want to keep all these options open in case of drought and plant in your own garden in case of famine. The most I will have you ready for all of this in those areas, or he'll move you somewhere else that won't experience those things or uh, like he did with us, he sent us into the land of Mizraim during the famine, and that's how we lived and survived. We we built our own houses in Mizraim. We had our own land. We had our own cattle. Our own, we grew on fruit, food, and we prospered, and we multiplied in their land, just as. We have been doing here, but we've been killing a lot of our own children. Listening to the propaganda of some white folks that want you dead anyway. That don't want to see you multiply. Don't want to see you rise up and become a, a, a nation again. So, brothers and sisters, I created this little free energy tab. Because there are many options out there for you if you are willing to investigate, if you got some skill and talent. You can do it as these people are doing right here. They're building all manner of free energy devices. What well, they call it free. It's not really free because you got to buy the parts, you got to put it together. You got to use your energy, to, your time, and your strength to put these things together and your own money. But once it's put together, you'll be self-sufficient in energy. That's what you want to become, self-sufficient in your own energy production. There's all manner of things out there. there there's a lot of people inventing these things. But they're going to have problems with the 
energy sector, which some of these people come out of dead, but don't let that scare you because the most high is mightier than them. So one of the ways that I know that you can easily do, if you have a house or even an apartment, to be prepared if the lights go out. For a house, solar panels have got cheap enough and more uh, efficient to buy. And nowadays, you can find all the parts you need to build your own um, battery banks. Or you can save up and buy your own battery banks. And these battery banks will store your energy for later usage. Let's say, uh, well, let me give you an example, like a car. The car has the alternator to keep that battery charged. And it uses the engine, the circulation of the engine, to turn to turn some magnets within some copper wire to produce electricity. And it sends that current of electricity right into the batteries to keep it charged. Well, in the case of solar panels, it, co it converts the solar rays of the sun into energy and sends that into the battery banks. But you also can make a generator like a bigger alternator, put it on an electric motor, put a battery right next to that electric motor so that it can crank up. But once you get that electric generator, that you know, the giant alternator, that's all it is. An electric generator is like a giant alternator on your car. Once you get that thing turning, it was, and if you connect it the right way, it will self-power itself and keep it going and spin up fast enough to send the send excess energy into your battery banks to keep those things charged up during the times when the sun is, isn't out. You know, if you get the solar panels as well. When the sun isn't out, or when it's raining, or when it's dark. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You can even get you a, a wind, wind turbine. But of course, you need the wind to power. What if it, there's no wind? So there are multi-systems you can create. There is even a way to separate the hydrogen from the water through electrolysis and through sound. Yes, somebody created a way to separate H2O, hydrogen and oxygen, and it, you know, it is gas form, separates the two molecules, molecules by sound. And you feed that hydrogen, they call it HHO gas or something like that, but it's, 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 it's in, in a sense, uh, in essence, hydrogen. And you feed that hydrogen into a gas generator. You know, you can get your propane generator, and you don't even need propane. You, you, you do a small conversion. And it will accept that hydrogen gas instead of the propane gas. And you can run and charge your batteries on that thing as well. And also feed a gas stove or a gas heater or a gas water heater. This hydrogen gas on demand type system.
And by having these multi-system, you yourself become self-sustainable without the need of the government itself. But you will be fulfilling their, their plans except for without their control over you and your household. It is a good plan to be self-sufficient, self-sustainable but separate from their systems. There's people running their cars off of this. All you gotta do is go to my playlist here, Total Free Energy, and just start checking all these different things they're doing out there. Look at how many people went without heat because the lights went off during this freeze storm that we had. Winter storm we had in Texas. Pipes bursting. People died. They froze in their homes because they didn't have no generators, backup generators. Could you imagine being in the negative degrees? And it don't matter how many blankets you pile up. You're going to freeze. It will take a whole lot of huddling underneath the covers with everybody to survive. But if you're in a house by yourself, it's just maybe you by yourself or maybe you and your wife. Yeah, y'all better huddle. But there's a certain point, depending on how old you are, where you're not going to be able to produce enough heat to counteract the cold. There are simple devices that you can make to survive the winters. If the power goes out or if the wood runs out, you fire up your electric generator, which will send energy to your hydrogen or your to your hydrogen generator, which uses electrolysis to separate the hydrogen from the from the oxygen, and you use that hydrogen gas. You you funnel that to a gas heater. And you heat your home with that. And you heat you, you you heat your hot water with it. And you run your stove with it. When there's no energy available. You see, going to all electric was a big mistake. And they knew it because it's more control from them. For them over you. But if you build your own house, make sure you own the deeds to the land and your house, the originals. Don't even buy it if you can't get the deed to the land or, I mean, the original separate deed for the land, the original separate uh, deed on the house itself, not bundled with some other package well, you got to go through all this just to separate your house from this package deal that they did in the banking system. You want full title ownership with your name on it to pass to your family. It's yours. No one can take it for no reason, for any reason. It's yours. It's your family's property and land forever that's what you want then on your land you can do all these things and there's a lot of videos of people showing you how to tap into freshwater streams and run that water to a well 
and using that water to to water your garden or flush your toilets spray on you know use in the inside of the home through a water filter but you want multiple water systems you, you want to harvest rainwater and you want that stream but what if that stream is diverted or stopped somehow what are you going to do for water well of course you're going to try to find the underground water well or underground water stream and, and try to dig down and tap into that so there are videos for that that show you how to find water on your property using the old method of two um, rods I think copper rods and you put some straw you know you curve it you put some straws on the end of it so that it can move on its own and you hold them out and straight and you walk your, your property until the two things cross I've seen this done, you know, someone recorded that and they had two straws, they, they curved it like an L and they held the, the short piece and they put straws on it so that uh, whatever magnetic energy that the water was giving off as it passed, it would make those things cross each other. And he will mark it and he'll keep walking until he find the, the, the direction of the stream. And he will set his markers out. Then he'll decide, he decided where he wanted his water well. And he dug, he showed you manually how to dig your own well using um, a dig bit at the end of a pole and how to attach other poles to, to that thing. And you can easily weld these things if you got welding skills. And you can dig down 15 feet, 20 feet, 25 feet till you dig and find the water. And then he shows you how to pipe it up, you know, how to use PVC piping. And what to use to fill in, you know, uh, around that area where, where the water comes in and how to stick your pipe down there just so far so you won't be right at the bottom sucking dirt and all that and you can pump your own water and it depends on the strength of the stream and how much water is coming into that and how much water you need you might have to dig a, uh, a wider well hole or something because the one he dug was just uh, like four inches because he only needed so much water in that area he dug that well but if you need a lot of water you're going to have to dig uh, wider and deeper you know once you find the water then you dig your water well wider and deeper and you're going to have to brick it up and all that other stuff or somehow create um, a huge PVC pipe or uh, those big round sewer or uh, rainwater cement blocks that you can set down in there and fit together easily, you know, not easily, but you probably get a crane to lower them down there. But it, it has to has holes in it where the water can come into the water well and fill your water well up. And once that thing fills up so far, you know what I mean? You, you put your pump in there. And over time, you're going to assess how much water you can pump. Out of there. So eventually, you're going to want another tank. Not just the water well, but you're going to pump so much water into that tank and fill it up. So that water can come from that tank to your house. So you, you're going to know the flow rate of how much you should put in that water well 
and if you combine that with catching rainwater and filtering it and add it to that tank, you should have no problems watering your garden, taking showers, doing the dishes. You know what I mean? You should have no problem washing clothes and, and not having to time everything and knowing how much ga- how, mu- how much gallons of water you can use per hour if you use a combination of, of these things that's available to you. Be smart on your own property so that your family for years to come will be able to survive. Survive any famines or survive any droughts and, and be self-sufficient. They even making solar roof shingles. Tesla is making these solar roof shingles. And I'm pretty sure there's other companies testing these things as well. And real soon your whole roof will be made of solar shingles. And all you need is a place to store that energy. And and there's many different types of batteries out there. Even new batteries called graphite super caps. And those, uh, along with some liquid metal batteries, which I've just started seeing uh, or getting an understanding of, are coming out. So... You have some great options, brothers and sisters. You have some good options. So, with that said, if you agree with the Most High, you would walk in His ways, even in the land of your captivity. And it would go well with you. Can you imagine if our parents did these things and passed that along to us? Can you imagine us coming together? Instead of it costing $150,000 for a house, your family coming together, helping you build it, for 50 to 70 grand. And then when you get the $150,000 house built, you had to pay another 150000 just because of the, the loan fee, the mortgage, the interest rate. You may end up paying $300,000 for a $150,000 house. Well, actually, without the labor, it's a fifty dollars to $70,000 house. But if you had skilled members of the family come together and build this house in a three-month span or period, For seventy thousand dollars, you put two hundred and thirty thousand back in your pocket. Imagine what you can use that for. Open up a business, set your house off, you know what I mean? Build these devices for your house first so it can be self sufficient in energy, self sufficient in food, self sufficient in water. Build up a great library to where you have access to knowledge and information right there to fix and repair everything in your house yourself. And over time, you and your family will learn how to fix everything. Yourself, you'll be your own plumber, your own electrician, your own carpenter, your own car mechanic, your own troubleshooter, your own computer expert, car computer expert, and house computer expert. You'll be your own natural, natural, pathic doctor, or 
I don't know, I forgot what you call them. Well, anyway, holistic doctors. Will you truly be cooking to live? You know what I'm saying? Could you imagine? But, of course, we got a lot to fight against. We got a lot of enemies fighting against the peace and prosperity of the righteous ones. The peace and prosperity of the good ones that want to see all these things come into, uh, into play in our lives. But who is mightier than the most high? Who is mightier than him? Y'all stick with the most high and he'll see you through. Confess your sins daily. Repent. Endure to the end. Endure to the end, brothers and sisters. Let the most high might barack you. And keep you and bring you into the land of promise. With that, I'm going to say shalom.